Now let's work on this fender here over the tire. What I'll do is I'll go to the side view with the three key on the number pad. And while I'm still here in edit mode, I'll press Shift A and notice the add menu is a little bit different. And that's because we're actually adding one of these polygon meshes to the existing object. So I want to create a circle here. So I'll click that. And here it is. You can see it there. And I'm going to turn it in the Y axis 90 degrees. So I'll press R, Y, 9 to 0 and press the Enter key. And now if we go back to that side view, we can hit G and move it over here a bit and scale it down. I'll hit the S key and I'll hit the period key to zoom in. And now we can kind of try and get it about the right size for that wheel well on the fender here. So maybe something about like this. Now we're gonna have to move some points, of course, but I think this looks pretty good. I'm gonna press Alt A to deselect and then click and drag this and delete these. Actually, I wanna keep this one, I think, right here, cause I wanna pull it back like that. So I'll delete these, delete vertices. And now we've got that edge over the tire right there. Now we need to begin connecting these up. And I just used the default 32 vertices on this circle not really knowing how many we need, but we can kind of go through and see how they're going to line up. And if we need to add or subtract anything, we can. So what I'll do here is take this one and move it down a bit maybe, and this one and kind of move it over. And I'll take these four vertices and I'll hit the F key to create a face. Now it's, <laughs> well, one thing I need to do is move that edge over to where it needs to be, right? So let's do that. Control Z. I'll then Alt click here for this edge. And let's go to the front view and let's move this over. That'll probably be a good thing to do first. There we go. Now let's turn this around and let's take these here and hit the F key. And there we go. Right. So now we've got the beginnings of this. And what we can do, once again, is we can just see how this is gonna work. It may not, but we can just see. We can select those two points and hit the F key and begin bringing these up. And yeah, it's working pretty well so far. Right about here is where it's gonna need some extra points, right? We're getting way too far off. So I'm gonna press Control Z and come back to here. So for this, let's say um, we need to move these down a bit. So let's hit G and two times and drag these down a bit like this. And I'm just gonna bring these. And you may need to hit G and move them back in line with the drawing, of course, something like this. So for here, we could take these two and we could add a point here. There are a couple ways to do that. We could right click and choose subdivide and that will add a point right in there. Let me show you another way. We can also, let me hit Control Z and remove that. We can also press Control R as if we're adding an edge loop and it'll add a point there and then we can hit Enter. So either way, I'll add that right here and maybe move this one over a bit. And then we can take these two and hit F and maybe F again. There we go. and. Uh, it looks like we could just move these. I'll do that. I'll move this to here, move this to here. And now we've got these. So we're only gonna be able to go up so far here. So I'll, I'll select these two, hit the F key here. And we could try one more, but I feel like we're kind of pushing it. We could, if we wanted to, add an edge loop through here, but I'm gonna press Control Z. And I feel like we could take this one away and move this one up. Let's try it. I'll hit delete and let's dissolve vertices and that will leave that edge there. And if I hit G and move this up, so let's see how this works. Hit the F key and there we go. So we've got the beginnings of that fender now. It looks like this comes out a little bit too much. I might push that in just a bit, something like this. So once again, you gotta look at it through a whole lot of views. I'll press Control-Alt-Q. We can come around and take a look at it. 
So from the side view, that's not too bad, but from here you can see it's kind of collapsing down. So we need to probably pull these up a bit. And we may even add an edge loop in here, but let's first work on pulling these up at the top and rounding it off a little more. So to do that, I want to scale this up, but I want to scale it, say, from this point here. Currently, if I select this whole edge with Alt click, you can see the pivot point is here. And if we come up here, we're currently on active element. Usually the default is median point, but when we were working on the hood, we switched it over to active element, and that's really what we want. So I'm gonna select that, and then once again, I'm gonna press shift and click this, and shift and click again, and now this point is white, whereas the others are orange, and that is now the active element. So now what we can do is push this up just a bit. I'm gonna press S and Z and scale in the Z axis till it comes up just a little bit more like this. And then we wanna do that with this one here. Alt click, shift click this and shift click it again to make that the active element. S, Z, and let's bring this up some. Here we go. And yeah, I think we need to add an edge loop in here. So let's do that. Let's press Control R, click and click again. And now let's once again, make this point the active element, S, Z, and scale up a bit like this. And I also may want to turn it just a bit. I'm going to press the R key and rotate it out just a bit. S, Z, bring it back some. So we get a little bit more of a curve there. And then Alt-click the edge over the tire well. Looks like I need to Alt-Shift-click this part as well. And maybe I'll pull these out just a little bit like this. So we're just kind of getting more of a, if not smooth curve, because we haven't smoothed it yet, a little bit more like the drawing here. This one, I feel like I should move over a bit. I'm gonna hit G two times and slide over just a bit like this. This one, I don't really like the tilt of that, what I did before. So I'm gonna take it back a little bit like this, and then S, Z, and bring that back up like that. Yeah, and it looks like we probably need one right in here too. So, Control R, drop that right in here, and let's take a look at this one. Now we could probably do the same thing with this. Make that point the active element, S, Z, and let's bring it up just a little bit like that. All right, so we have some strangeness here with the line of the geometry here. We need to work on that, but generally speaking, I think this is a pretty good shape, at least from the front view. Let's take a look at it from the top. Yeah, we could round this off a little bit better here. So to do that, I'm gonna press Control-Alt-Q and come out of that and just go to the top view here. And once again, we will make this the active element and we will scale in the Y axis now, S, Y, and pull this one out just a bit, right? Select this one. Make this the active element right back here. I could use this one, I guess. Let's do that. S, Y. Let's bring this one out. Same with this. Looks like I could do all of this back here. Alt, Shift, Click, and then let's select that point here. Oh, looks like I've got these selected. I don't want these. There we go. And let's pull this out in the Y. S, Y like that, and we'll do the same thing here, S, Y. So we're just trying to get that basic shape from every angle. This I could probably move in just a bit. Okay, so from the top view, it looks pretty good. Let's tumble around and see how it looks from the front view. Looks pretty good here. And the side view looks pretty good. So as I said, we're gonna need to adjust these so they're a little bit straighter. So we can do that pretty easily by just using the G key two times again, hit G two times and begin sliding some of these around. Because you do want to make your geometry fairly smooth so it flows fairly well, and that can help avoid dents and puckers um, when we smooth it and when we put a uh, shiny material on it. So I'm just going to try and get a few of these in place. Maybe move this one back a bit. So 
just general adjusting. This is going to have to happen. Every time we do anything, we're going to have to go through some basic adjusting, I think. Now, it looks like this whole row got pushed down when I was moving things around. So let me uh, go back here, Alt-Z, and I'm just going to take this and move this all the way up and move it over in line there. That happens. Well, at least it happens to me quite a bit. All right. I'll take this and move it back a bit. So we're getting there. We're doing pretty well. We could go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier to see how this is going to work. Let's do that. Come over here to the modifiers panel, add subdivision surface. Oh, let me move this guy back down over here. There we go. Subdivision surface. I'll take it up to two. I'll select it and right click it and choose shade smooth. There we go. So now we can see a little bit better what we need to do in certain places. Right? We can tumble around, find areas that we don't really like, like this area down here. I'm not a fan of this. And begin to kind of get the shape that you want here. Maybe I'll pull this back just a little bit. And some of this is going to be easier to see what we do once we get the bumper on. But for now, this is pretty good. I'll just move some of these down like that. All right, so we're getting there. We've got little indentations here. I'll come over and turn on this edit cage right here, which will put the points right on the subdivided surface. And then we can see the curve a little bit better as we move things around. And then we can always come up to our mat cap here, turn that on, see how we're looking. Yeah, I think a little bit more adjusting needs to be done, but it's looking pretty good. We can, of course, add a mirror modifier to this. Add modifier mirror. See it on the other side. And then we can bring back the trunk and the hood and kind of see where we are so far. All right. In the next video, we will continue on this side fender and begin extruding on down the side of the car.